can see that we have already a lot of people joining us. And uh, so I want to welcome everyone to the September edition of our traditional webinar, Ask Julie Anything. I am Mariana Nadai, Marketing and Events Coordinator at Adorbis, and I will be your host today. During this session, Julie will be answering your questions about any topic from nutrition to health, wellness, and everything to help our adored beasts. So don't be shy and ask Julie anything. Before we start, I want to ask all of you here to switch your chat to everyone so that we can all join in on the conversation. And please use the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen to ask your questions. We will do our best to get through all of them. I also want to remind you that this session provides a judgment-free space with, with only the health and happiness of our animals and the planet being our core goal. So without further ado, I would like to welcome you, Julianne, Julianne Lee. <laughs> it's it's been like this all night it's been it's like this here trying to get stuff done to get up up here so it's all good usually when it uh starts off like this it winds up being a really good a really good time so okay all uh, right so yes do you want to the questions yeah so we have already like some questions here in the q and i'll start with sandra uh, she's asking, this is the second season of allergies for my two and a half year female bovier. And uh, she was fine two weeks ago. And now the poor thing is so itchy. I have her on liver tonic, C omega-3 health gut. And I just started the East Beast protocol yesterday. I'm also using East Beast free to uh, topical spray on her. This happened last September, but it definitely was not as bad. I'm desperate to find something to help her. Um, I'm also giving her vet's best seasonal allergy support. I know this isn't the best, but it's hard to watch to watch her struggle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I I wish I knew where she lived. Um, Sandra, if you're there, maybe you could let me know where you are. The this year, depending on where you are, is uh, at the fall seasonal allergies are going to be bad because often they're mold related. And we've had so much rain that the leaves are actually molding way sooner and they're way more, um, uh, they're just a lot more mold on them really things are things are molding like grass is molding there's a lot more mold happening so i would say to i don't know if you um have our uh rebalancer i would start her on the rebalancer the i don't know if you've used it or not i'm not sure if she can write i live near peterborough yeah, yeah. so that that makes sense so it's really humid and it's really wet it's been really wet so there's a lot more mold allergies happening sandra have you ever given your dog the rebalancer i wonder if she has maybe she can put no okay so i would suggest that i would suggest the rebalancer and if you've got the yeasty beast protocol that's good because you're gonna have um uh the the actual homeopathic remedy in that which should help decrease the itch uh the other thing i was just wondering is she is does she have any like sores is she does she have any like open sores or anything like that uh i can order some sandra i can okay is her skin like red or or um is she biting it till it's raw anything anything like that sandra I don't, oh, she has some scabs and yes, red and biting. Okay. So, so what I would do if it's that, if it's that bad, I would try and do two weeks of do everything that you're doing. It's good, but I would try and do two weeks of, if you're going to do the yeasty beast, um, protocol, then stop the healthy gut because the healthy gut has, uh, probiotics in it. And when we're doing the yeasty beast protocol, we want to not, we want to kind of not do probiotics during the time that you're doing the yeasty beast. And that's because 
we're trying not to ramp up the bacterial flora too much rather rather than we're trying to starve the yeast and then the herbs in the yeasty beast will attack attack the actual yeast and then you'll get a slower die off if you get too fast of a die off if she's got yeast it's going to look like her allergies are getting worse and it's it really isn't so what you should do is stop the healthy gut for just for now stop the healthy gut start the yeasty beast make sure that you're not giving her anything that is going to cause um more inflammatory response so try and make sure that she's not getting any carbs any like really uh starchy vegetables carrots things like that try to keep her more on the on the like leafy greens and things get the rebalancer and give her the rebalancer twice a day along with the everything that's in the yeasty beast then after two to three weeks let customer service know and depending on how she's doing if she's making slow improvement then they'll just say to stay then she should just stay on if she's not making slow improvement then they'll they could very likely put you on something called the relief protocol if she's that bad it sounds like a lot of stuff, but it, it doesn't cost any more money in the long run because you're using some stuff and stopping others. And then you're going to introduce that and stop this. So it's it's kind of like I call it the relief protocol for dogs that are just crazy, crazy, crazy itchy. So I hope that helps. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Amanda is asking a uh, seven year, year old former cancer research beagle, liver enzymes declined by half, 11 AST and 8 ALT, now yeah. low hemat hematocrit and uh, hemoglobin. Yeah, uh, ultrasound shows subjectively small liver, slightly enlarged prostate, prostate uh, with cyst plus residual tissue after neutering. Notice he stopped chewing on private during liver tonic, but resumed on one once bottle was finished. RAF test was negative. Ure, urine al analysis normal except somewhat diluted urine. Starting a blood uh, builder and jump for joints. Thoughts on aspiration, biopsies, other steps for diagnosis? Um. So, so it smells, it shows a small liver, subjectively a smaller, small liver. And then now she's got, he's got low hematic. So it's really hard. Like, is he anemic from chronic disease? Does he have, is, is that what the anemia is coming from? Um, I'm sure you've got him on a really good, like whole food diet. That would be like the first thing that I would be looking at is, um, uh, a whole food diet. And Amanda, you can add stuff to the chat if I'm asking questions and you can um, address some of the questions that I'm as asking. So uh, if he's not on a whole food diet, you should definitely be putting him on a whole food diet. Reintroduce the liver tonic. And to be honest with you, if it's a former cancer research beagle and it's seven years old, I would keep him on liver tonic long term. Our liver tonic is really good that way because you don't have to worry. Like you don't have Rita Hogan always says it's the only liver support that she says can a dog can just stay on. She's not worried about um taking them on, taking them off. And I've found the same thing. I have animals that have been on it like 10 years and and it's just been amazing. And if he does have a have a small liver, probably going to need um, some liver support long term, and that's and that one that that's one that's really really good. So, from a perspective of everything that he's been through in the research side of 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 things, you want to really be looking at. Um, uh, you really want to be looking at um, detoxifying his body, but detoxifying it in such a subtle way like crazy, crazy, subtle, subtle way. So what I would do right now is I would actually put him also on, I, I would put him on, um, um, Phytos flora because of the, the fulvic and humic acid in it. 
and I would put them on um, turkey tail uh, mushrooms. So turkey tail mushrooms and phytos uh, flora and definitely liver tonic. Then once those bottles are done, then I would switch to phyto synergy. I would keep them on the, the liver tonic and then I would move into the wolf, the wolf probiotic. So just switch up the turkey tail for phyto synergy and then phytos flora to um, the wolf strain. What you're doing is that Cancer research, as you know, is is uh, pretty hardcore. So we want to get the diversity back into the gut because his gut, I'm positive, will be really, really not very happy. So when it comes to hematocrite and hemoglobin, and when it comes to uh, just chronic disease and to um, producing healthy cells, your gut is responsible for so many of those things, like short chain fatty acids, hormones, all of that stuff. So I would, I would definitely be really, like I always say, looking at his gut, but definitely the liver tonic, doing those alternate things. Turkey tail is incredible for, for cancer. So just keeping your eye on that continually. And the last thing I, I was thinking, like if he has an enlarged prostate with a cyst, it says plus resident, re, um, he, when was he neutered? Can you put in when he was neutered? How long ago he was neutered? Cause it says residual tissue from neutering. It's interesting that 2.5 years ago, 2.5 years ago is when he was neutered and he still has residual scarring or, or tissue. Um, the fact that is, has, has, that he's neutered and has an enlarged prostate is interesting. It's really good that the BRAF test was negative. So you're, you're not concerned too much about that. So I would be looking at a, a remedy called San Pimento, which is a really amazing, uh, uh, tincture for enlarged enlarged prostates and you could also reach out to Rita Hogan and ask her uh she she could probably make uh you could probably talk to her and she could make you uh, a tincture specifically for prostates to help to dec decrease the size of the prostate I know this sounds crazy but they say that um I know I'm sure you know where the yes that's correct the the where the prostate is is if there's a bulge just underneath his anus then massaging that area is really really helpful too for for prostate enlargements so i think detoxifying him getting him on something that will help to decrease the the size of his prostate and he, you know, working on his gut and giving him um, liver tonic, it'll be really interesting to see what happens to his red blood cells when you try and work on his gut and his liver in 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 combination. Uh, blood builder beneficial vet recommended it. You know, I can't I can't say I can't. I can't say, you know, yes or no, because I, I haven't actually seen the blood work and I haven't seen your dog, but it depends on why they think his blood is, is um, uh, compromised. Because if it's compromised, it, it really depends. And it depends on what the blood builder is. You have to be careful with, um, if, with his liver, with iron, right? Like you're going to have to watch to be sure that his, his liver can handle like an iron supplement. I, I don't know what supplement they're, they're recommending, but that would be something that I would just, you know, ask your veterinarian, you know, what, what's in it is there concern about um, his liver and not being able to handle um, anything that's too high in iron. And um, 
Inner ten, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's in that. So, but those would be the those would be the the suggestions that from a supplementation point of view and from a gut point of view that I would definitely be looking at. Thanks, Julie. Um, Linda is saying, hi, CC, my eight-year-old female Labradoodle has been taking Palladia for cancer in her lymph, um, lymph node in the yeah. growing area. My vet advised not to feed raw food. What are the risks if I want to continue feeding her a raw diet? That's again, <laughs> that's what your vet's telling you. Um, ask your vet if you could do a, uh, like a, a raw food, freeze dried food. So maybe it's expensive, it'd be really expensive for a labadoodle, but um, I'm doing that with my dog right now. And he's, he's a 85 pound dog. And it is, um, the reason that they're concerned is because they're her, your dog's immune system is compromised, right? So it's using drugs for cancer makes their immune system, suppresses their immune system. So then they're way more compromised to getting infections. Personally, you know, it, it depends if you, if you're really, um, um, really want, like, I agree with you. I think your dog should have real food, whether it's having cancer treatment or not, but you could take your raw food and cook it. You could, you could just uh, feed a cooked food, a cooked diet for a little bit and make sure that you're getting, you know, like raw um, antioxidants, like green leafy vegetables that are, you know, like, or I don't know where you live, but um, uh, Billy Hochman's green juju, like adding green juju to like cooked meat would be, would be something that would be an alternate um, to feeding raw. That would be really, really good as well. And again, just be, you know, really cognizant that anything like that really affects the gut. So you want to, you want to try and really support the gut during, during any kind of cancer, um, cancer treatment. And then the other uh, thing that I would seriously be looking at and asking your veterinarian what, what they think of it is turkey tail definitely adding turkey tail and you can let your vet know that um you know that in in japan it's considered a conventional treatment well, turkey tail with any kind of chemotherapy or uh cancer cancer treatment uh to try and help support the live cells from being destroyed which is what sort of the side effect of chemo is right can't differentiate between um the uh between the um, the cancer cells and the, and the healthy cells, which is really super dangerous. So using using turkey tail along with uh, any kind of cancer treatment is something that I would I would highly ask your vet if 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 they're okay that you do that. And there's tons of stuff you can go online and just look at turkey tail with chemotherapy, turkey tail with cancer treatments. And there's so much research that you could print off and take to your vet so that they're not worried. Thanks. Um, Bridget is saying that quite some time ago, you mentioned giving Lidum 30C and 200C prophylacticale <laughs> to prevent Lyme. Can, can you expand on this? Uh, is this in lieu of a no so no, no. Mm -hmm. uh, is there M line no no dode available in Canada? Um, I don't know if it's in Canada, but you can get it from you can get it from a homeopath. Bridget, you could definitely get the lime no zode. There's the bordetella. Um, uh, there's all different, not to tell, but there's different, the different species of limes too, the different viruses of limes. And I think you can get all of them. Uh, Ledum 30C and 200C, I use prophylactically with all my animals here on my farm. It goes literally in my horse's water trough and my cow's water trough. Um, my dogs and cats get it 
basically daily until tick season is over. And, you know, touch wood, I've been really, really, really lucky. And um, they're all, they're all great. But the, the nozode is also good for sure. You could reach out to Andrea Ring. Um, if you, somebody wants to put Andrea's uh, email in the chat, please. Uh, she could, she can probably get it for you as well and send it to you if you're in Canada. Thanks, Julie. Susie is asking, we have a rescue pit bull who I am inclined not to spay for the health reasons. She has had a lit litter already. Thoughts on no spay versus OSS? Ovary spaying, ovary, ovary sparing spay. Um, honestly, I would do the ovary sparing spay. So long as so long as you've had the dog for a little while, uh, the I, I homeo can does sell nose oats, but I don't know whether they've got those ones. But they might. That's a good. That's a good point. Um, someone just put it in the chat about homeo can. So, I if you just rescued her, then I would I would give her a minute to to you know really bond with you and and you know settle into herself and settle into her home, and then I would spay her, especially being a pit bull. Because for whatever reason, you know, pit bulls, um, mastiffs, did they say deep, sometimes deep chested dogs with not just pyometra, but um, uh, twisted gut and stuff. But I wonder if it has something to do with that too. Just, I had a dog that I didn't spay. I didn't do anything with her. And when she was nine, she got pyometra. And she got really, really, really sick. And I had to spay her. And it was really hard on her. It was really, really hard on her because we had to take everything, right? Because it was an emergency. And she declined really fast after. I mean, she'd still lived for three more years. But in about three months after I spayed her, she couldn't jump up on the bed. And at nine years old, she was jumping right up on my bed. And I had this big high princess in the pee bed. And she just jumped right up on it. And then within three months, I was picking her up her back legs to put her on because of, she just, you know, it was like she went in, into instant menopause. She didn't slowly go into menopause. So I would, I would, if I, if it was my dog and I had to do it again, I would, that's what I would do. Thanks, Julie. And there's lots of things to support her, right? So she still have her ovaries, you know, lots of things to support her you know, proactively after, um, you know, just long-term to help with the, you know, arthritis and things like that. So yeah, that, that's my, that's my personal opinion. Thanks. There is, as asking, my four-year-old dog has been on the leak gut protocol since December. There has been some improvement, but he's he's still itchy at this time of, of year and is biting at his feet and belly with hair loss and sores. Mm -hmm. Feed raw according to one of Judy Morgan's recipes. Nutri-scan tests run to rule out food sens sensitiv sensitivities. What more can I do to help alleviate the itch while the protocol continues to work? Okay, so some improvement. It's been on the leaky gut protocol since December. Yeah. So that's quite a while. I would do uh, reach out to our customer service and I would actually do the relief protocol because the relief protocol enters it. But when dogs get really bad in the, in the fall, I often wonder if there is an element of yeast that just hasn't been diagnosed. So the protocol runs through the leaky gut protocol, then phytosflora, then uh, yeasty beast protocol, then phytosflora again, then the leaky gut protocol. And they're two week intervals and you stop, you stop them, but you continue liver tonic throughout the whole, throughout the whole course. So 
a lot of, um, you know, if you just reach out to customer service, they can send it to you. They'll send you the protocol, how to do it. That's what I would suggest doing because, you know, if, if, if there is some kind of, um, uh, if there is some kind of lurking mold or yeast situation, the yeasty beast protocol is really, really good, really, really good for that. So it, and then the yeasty beast, if there is that it plays havoc on the gut, on the gut lining. So then you have to wind up doing the, the, the leaky gut protocol anyway. So to save you some money and to get sort of maybe down into the core issue a little more, if you did the proto the, the relief protocol, it would be it would probably be really helpful. He had a bad reaction to the, oh, okay, with vomiting. Oh, maybe he's allergic to the Podarco. Okay, so then let's do this. Let's do, I'm just trying, okay, so now that you're in the chat, that's awesome. Then I can ask you. When you did the, the protocol, did the improvement start sooner, like early on, and then sort of plateau? Or is he slowly improving since December? Hopefully, Teresa can. Teresa, I'm hoping that you can, you just heard my question. Because that's going to make a big difference of what I would, uh, what I would recommend. Oh, he's slowly improving since December. Okay. Um, then I would start to add some some things to this i would probably start adding some species oriented probiotics tools are better not as itchy as last year okay so right now and hopefully he's still on the liver tonic because that's really helpful in with seasonal allergies like fall allergies but i would do perfect i would oh that's what i wanted to ask you did you stop the rebalancer So the little homeopathic remedy that you gave that you give for up to two to two days to a week have have you given that again since December? No, that's what I would do. So before I even went into other products, put him on that rebalancer again or her on that rebalancer again, and do it twice a day for seven days and see if there's a change. Just keep doing everything else like you're doing, but put the, start the rebalancer again and make a, make a really clear note if there's any change uh, in, in the itch with that. And if there is after a week, then stop it. And then it should continue to improve. If it doesn't, or it slips back again, then you can add it. If he gets worse in any way, shape or form, then I would probably add um, either I would add either, um, the wolf strain or phytos flora, one, one of the two, so that you're getting the, a different type of, uh, more species oriented probiotic in with that as well. So the, those would be the things that I would be looking at. I'd also be looking at, you know, phytosynergy, um, add to the leak pro Yes. You can add it so you can continue or if you want, you can, you know, not do gut soothe one day and just to save money, you can not, not do the gut soothe one day and do a, do a phytos flora. Then the next day, do the leaky gut protocol again, or use the, the gut soothe again. And then the next day, use the, use the um, phytos flora or the wolf strain, whichever one that you would want to do. But I think that if he's only four, um, you know, I, my, my sense is to, to, to try and do the phytos flora. And then once you finish phytos flora, you can alternate the gut soothe with, um, with a wolf. So one day gut soothe, next day, do the whole, continue doing the whole protocol, but one day gut soothe, the next day phytos flora. Keep doing that till the phytos flora is finished. And once the phytos flora is finished, then replace the phytos flora with the wolf strain. And then you're getting another divert, really diverse probiotic. Then once that's done, 
then you could do the soil and see. We want to, with animals with allergies, we want to put in the most diverse, interesting, different kind of bacteria as we possibly can to get the, to get that flora really, really uh, paying attention and educated to anything that they're dealing with. Um, and an omega and an omega supplement. Yes, you, you can do an omega a sub, um, an omega supplement, but if you're gonna do that, do that do just so that you're not getting confused before you do anything or go out and buy anything more. Do the um, the rebalancer first and see if there's a shift with the rebalancer. I had I don't buy done twice and he's lacking in diversity. Exactly. That's that's exactly what I'm trying to say. So I would be rather than doing an omega supplement right away, if you're, you know, if money's an issue, and if money's not an issue, still do one thing at a time so that you know what you're doing, like what is affecting them in a positive way, what affect what affects them in a negative way. Um, but I would uh definitely alternate phytos flora and then alternate the wolf because then that way you're going to get turkey tail which is going to really enhance its immune system um you know like a, a, a modulate his immune system actually and then the wolf and the the wolf strain and then phytos flora has got the two dog strains so you're really going to mix it up and then after those you can add in soil and sea and you can do you can you can have all of those probiotics on your shelf and alternate them every like every day. It doesn't it doesn't hurt to do it that way either. But if he's very sensitive, my 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 first go to or my first feeling with that would be to do things two weeks at a time so that we know which which one's doing what. So you know what the leaky gut protocol does with them. So you don't have to worry about that. If you're going to add something add it for two weeks. And then if it, if it's going well, then you can add a different probiotic. And if then that's going well, then you can add a different probiotic. And then if that's going well, then you can add the omega supplement, but do it so that you really, really know what's helping and what isn't helping. Great. She's saying that uh, her dog is already in on the the omega, omega supplement. supplement. Yeah. yeah. So that's fine. Amazing. Okay. So Amy is saying that uh, her six-year-old chai, uh, or she, I don't know, uh, mayo, uh, mayo neutered, feed cooked, home prepare has been scratching his left ear, shaking his head, chewing his front paws, being on gut suit since February. In February, vet gave him antibiotics drops for his ears, did mm -hmm. nothing. Is there a um, homeopathic remedy uh, that might help? Yeah. So if it's his front paws and his ears, that's very yeasty based. You know, there's a that's a, that that kind of screams like from paws and ears. Often, I mean, I, not all, not always, but often is yeast. So I would try the ECBs protocol for sure. And in the ECBs protocol, there is a homeopathic remedy in the ECBs protocol to help with itching and to help with yeast. So that's what, um, that's what I would personally do. And then you would stop the gut suit while you're on the yeast beast. And then if you're feeling like the dog needs gut suit, then just stop for two do it for two weeks, stop for, and do gut soothe for two weeks, and then go back on the, 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 the yeast beast protocol and just alternate it like that. But the remedy can be given whether you're on gut soothe or whether you're on the, the protocol, if the remedy is helping. Thanks, Julie. Just before going back to the Q and A, there's a comment here. Uh, from Barbara saying that she didn't know the probiotics can be alternated. So that's good to know that it, maybe you can explain just like in 30 seconds why it's good to alternate probiotics. Well, I mean, I I was just taught, I just did a podcast today with, with somebody and um, 
I was saying that hopefully in the year we'll have five, within a year, we'll have five more different probiotics. So my goal for ABA, for Adored Beast, is to have, is to be like the go-to place where you can feel comfortable knowing that when you're alternating the probiotics that you're not over overdoing one or you're not going to get into trouble um, by adding them. And, you know, I, I always feel like, like alternating things are great anyways, especially if your animals responding or your own body's responding to it. But by alternating the probiotics, especially the probiotics that I formulate, they're very specific. So they all do different things and they all focus on different things. So by alternating them, you're kind of giving that high level look and that high, ah, sorry, that high level look and that high level um, understanding that the diversity is paramount in, in, in good gut health. So yes, you can definitely alternate, um, uh, definitely alternate probiotics are probiotics. I don't know about other people's probiotics, but I formulate them specifically so we can alternate them. Thanks, Julie. So going back to the Q&A, uh, Annalisa is asking a question regarding allergies, food, and envir environmental. I have two golden retrievers, and one is on apical and allergens. What do you suggest doing is, is protocol or other for envir environmental? One is on apical and allergens. What do you suggest doing? Is protocol or a or other for environmental? <laughs> well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to speak to allergies in general for, for this one. The number one thing you want to do. So Apoquil is deaf is, is really immune suppressive. And the reason that is, is because any kind of overreactivity, sensitivity, or allergy is is triggered from immune from an, from an autoimmune uh, response or an overactive immune system or immune system that has somehow been triggered to attack things that really should be passive. So anything from beef protein to grass. So dogs, people, bodies shouldn't be allergic to or sensitive to things that sustain their bodies to survive from a food perspective or that they are going to be in on a regular basis, like walking in grass or walking under a tree or things like that. So why, why, why this is happening to begin with is something has triggered that the body to, to become hyperactive. So they use Apoquil, they use steroids, they use antihistamines, they use, you know, venectyl P, which is a steroid and a antihistamine combination. There's all different things that they use to suppress the immune system or suppress the histamine response. So instead of, um, instead of being really, really, um, uh, concentrating on suppressing it, the best thing would be is to, um, so when it comes to, you know, this is a, I always feel like things happen like this. Um, because when we're talking about Apoquil and when we're talking about suppressing the immune system, there is zero judgment because I, you know, the first thing that I ever came out with for ABA was um, the leaky gut protocol. And the reason that I did that was because I couldn't handle watching animals suffer. And suffering is, is really intense when it comes to allergies. You know, animals suffer when they have cancer, but it's a different kind of suffering than when they're tormented constantly. So when we're talking about Apoquil, I have like zero judgment about, about you giving your Goldens Apoquil at, at all. But 
it isn't a cure. It's a suppressive measure of sort of like band-aiding why your dog has allergies to begin with or why we have allergies to begin with. The, the, the fear in that is that it gets suppressed. We're not getting rid of it and it just goes somewhere else. And, you know, the two main things with animals is, is allergies and cancer. So um, when I look at that, my, my answer to you would be, you can't just take your dog off of Abiquil. I know that's not what you're saying, but I know there's a lot of people out here that probably are dealing with animals that are on venectopy and Abiquil and stuff like that. And what I tell people is that you start to support your dog and then you bring him up, bring him up, bring him up. And then you start to decrease the Apoquil, right? So you're, you're decrease, you're, you're balancing the homeostasis of your dog till you get to a certain point and then you start to decrease the, the Apoquil. And then you sort of like gear up a little bit more and decrease a little bit more. So you're, 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 you're balancing, you're doing a balancing act because what the worst thing is, and I see it all, all, all the time is that, that people just stop it because they're scared and they don't want their dogs on stuff like that. And then there's something called a rebound effect. So the minute that you're suppressing the immune system, because the immune system, the immune, let's, 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 here's, here's where the immune system should be. And it should react and go higher when your animal has been subjected to viruses or bacteria, and then it should come down and then it should go back up and come down. But when it's been overstimulated, it goes too high. So then what happens is that it gets suppressed, right? They suppress it because it's overactive. Soon as you take that suppressive measure off, it rebounds and goes way high. So it looks like everything is getting worse. It is, but what's actually happening is it's rebounding back because it's being suppressed, has, has been suppressed. You don't want to do that to your dog back and forth or your cat or your horse or whatever you're working with or whatever companion that you have. You want to slowly reduce, and it's not something that vets are, are comfortable doing because there's a protocol for reducing steroids and reducing Apoquil. And in my experience, they're still too fast because most animals have rebound effects when you take them off in, in the conventional way. So I would start your animal on things that are called immune modulators. That is like, like, that is like the next thing that, that everybody should be really, 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 um, uh, really thinking about like immune modulation means that if it goes too high, it brings it down. If it goes too low, it brings it up. So if it goes into overreaction, it brings it back to balance. If it goes for underreaction from viruses and bacteria, it brings it back up. So things that are immune modulation are things like, um, someone says sounds like adaptogen, adaptogens. Adaptogens do very similar things, but with your adrenal glands. So um, it is similar, only the immune modulation piece is, is much um, is much more related to the gut and the immune system. So someone's written mushrooms, exact, yes, mushrooms and certain probiotics, um, have been researched for immune mod modulation and our, uh, phytos flora, our feline flora and our wolf have phenomenal immune modulation, scientifically proven immune modulation uh, characteristics. So those would be something that I would be looking at once, when, even when they're on Apoquil. And I would be a little concerned about doing the yeast protocol with Apoquil only because it's an intense, it's a really intense um, uh, drug. If you want, if you're worried about yeast, then I would be doing something like 
making sure that there's no starches and things like that in, in your, in your animal's food. So making, trying to sort of starve the, the, the yeast, if you think it is the yeast, or if you're going to do that, I would definitely not just do straight yeast protocol. I would be doing the, that relief thing without a doubt, because then you're adding, you're, you're taking, you're trying to kill the yeast, but then you're adding and the Apoquil is sort of destroying the gut, the gut, the gut probiotic or the gut microflora anyways. So you, it's not going to hurt continue to add the flora in there havoc on the gut line so things like gut soothe will, gut soothe will help and so will um um phytos flora so those two things will help the the gut lining and one last thing with apoquil is um or any kind of uh drug period is is really 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 supporting the liver it's a it's a big one it's a really important one so my mom used to always say, don't throw the baby out with the bath water, meaning if you're going to have to do a drug, then research your drug, see, see what specific organ it, it uh, hits the most, like the liver or the kidneys, um, the gut for sure, and support your dog while it's on that build his, don't build his immune system up because then you're doing the polar opposite instead of what the apple is trying to do you want to balance the gut microflora so that you're immune you're doing immune modulation Oh, no, no, I'm not, I'm not frozen. frozen. Yes, yes, my, my question. question. No, no, Julia isn't frozen. Marianne, I think. Oh, now you're not. Marianne, you were frozen for a bit. So I don't know if you said anything. <laughs> no, I was yeah. worried that you were frozen because we never know who is. <laughs> yeah, it was it was you. So yeah, I was just sorry. that maybe that's okay. No worries. Um, okay, so then the Stephen Knight. Yes. So I have a 10 year old German shepherd who was just diagnosed with hip dysplasia and hypothyroidism. Yes. Thyroidism. So, uh, I currently use quite a few of um, your supplements to include jump for joints. He was prescribed uh, gaily print for the arthritis. Do you have any suggestions for using any of uh, your products? I would like to use a few prescription um, medications as possible. Okay. Uh, yes. So you're using jump for joints. I don't know how often that you're using it, but you can use jump for joints three to four times a day even. So you can do like a massive loading dose with that. Um, hypothyroidism. I'm I'm sure he's probably on on thyroid. Um, Stephen, if you want to put in the chat, is he on thought? Did they put him on um, a, a thyroid supplement or a thyroid hormone? I would imagine that they did do that. I uh, can't. Uh, hold on. Ah, massive loading dose for how long? Um, until you see the difference. So you could put him on it three to four times a day. And then you can watch him and see if it's helping. So let's say you're going to put him on it four times a day and then he, and he does better. Then you can start to go to three times a day. If he's still, if he's still good, then you can go to two times a day. And then all of a sudden, if he gets limpy on two times a day, then you go back up to three times a day. You let the body show you what, what your dog's actually needing. Um, but Stephen, did they put him on a, on a, on, on the thyroid? medication because that's that's something oh yes yeah, okay, good. yes that's good okay so when you're looking at hip dysplasia when you're looking at thyroid um and you're looking at the drugs first thing i'm going to say is again what i said before is make sure that you have the um the liver support that's that's really 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 important to support his liver now you know, there are, we're actually 
coming out with a really a different um we're pretty excited about it a different herbal uh medicate uh, medication herbal supplement for for joints that has been really working out incredibly well but you can use collagen collagen is really good and bone broth is really good and definitely 100 percent because you're you're looking at you're looking well your thyroid is a hormone and when your thyroid is out of whack it doesn't just affect your thyroid it affects all of your hormones so making sure that you're using a probiotic that really, really supports the postbiotic effect of the hormones is really, really vital. So for your guy, I would probably put him on um, on Phytos Flora, Phytos Flora, and the um, higher dose of of Jump for Joints and Liver Tonic. But I don't know whether you've got him on. You could maybe let me know. Do you have him on a on a on a Omega? on an omega oil because that's really important too like incredibly important yeah he, uh, he has he has okay perfect so you can also do um i don't know whether you did whatever oil you're using i don't know if you did a loading dose of that or not but it's a lot of a lot of oils you can do loading doses to make sure that that you're you've got them up as high as they can go and then you can you can lower them down again but you're, you know, you're doing, if you did all that, then you're kind of looking from a supplementation wise, what you're doing with your dog, but like the, uh, golden, golden paste, you know, I've, I know lots and lots of people that are, that are having great results with golden paste and that's the quercetin and, and not quercetin, um, turmeric and you make it with turmeric with, uh, uh, black pepper. There's lots and lots of different, uh, golden paste recipes. I even think, I don't know, guys, can you maybe, oh, we all have a recipe and a blog. So, and also I think maybe Billy is doing a golden paste, Billy Hochman. I don't know whether you're in um, the U S or Canada. He's saying that he's doing the golden paste as as well. Okay, good. So you're doing, you're doing everything that you possibly can. So you just have to, um, uh, if when you start using drugs, oh, you know what's really good is CBD. CBD oil is amazing for for pain. So he's probably going to put in that you're using CBD oil too. But um, CBD oil is really really good for pain as well. I've got a lot of horses on CBD oil that has that have really really bad arthritis. So CBD oil is great, and just um, you know. If you're going to do the uh, drugs, our phytos flora is really good because of fulvic and humic acid. It helps to detoxify. Um, liver tonic is really good. And just, you know, as clean a food as it possibly can with him. But I don't know how long he's been on his thyroid medication, but I think that in itself might even help with the pain of hip, believe it or not, um, with his hip dysplasia. So hopefully... Sounds like you're doing a lot already, but those would be the recommendations that I would have. Amazing, Julie. Um, Susie is asking, when, if ever, is it appropriate to decrease protein raw when creatinine and bun levels are through the roof high? Susie, is this a cat or a dog? Dog. Dog, okay. Um, can you tell me how old he is or she is? Well, I shall put that in a second. So the reason that I asked that is because cats are a lot more carnivores than dogs are. Age unknown, a client, but old. Okay, but old. All right. So yes, you know, when what I used to do at my clinic is make sure that the protein that they were eating was really, really, really quality protein. So, you know, protein that was like meat that was, if you could, if you can possibly get like a hundred percent grass fed, um, organic, the cleaner, the meat, when it comes to kidneys, 
the better or liver, the better. So if you can get some meat that are, that's really, really um, clean, that that's helpful. And then absolutely you can, you can decrease the protein and increase the veg. And sometimes I've done, you know, 40% protein, 60% vegetables, and just made sure that the vegetables have a really high diversity as well. You know, lots of green leafy vegetables, um, blueberries, different kinds of uh, fruits that have high antioxidants and different kinds of vegetables that have high antioxidants. And then see, and you know, liver tonic so that you've got the berberis in it to support the, the, the kidneys, which is really vital. Um, and then once you're there and, 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 and at that level for a little while, recheck the blood and, and see how, how the dog's doing. But I did that and I got, you know, there's, there's every single person's going to tell you a different thing right? And everybody's had different experiences with animals and different things that work and different things that don't work. My personal experience is with dogs that have high kidney values or, or going into kidney failure. Um, I, de- I decrease it to about 40% in, in 60% veg, but make sure that they have essential fatty acids and um, What's really good if they have is make sure that they have essential fatty acids and amino acids, because if you're decreasing their meat, you're also going to be decreasing their amino acids and amino acids are really important. And uh, phytosynergy has really a, an incredible range of amino acids and not really high levels so that you have to worry, but really, really a diverse amino acid profile, an incredible one actually. And then it also helps with the antioxidants. So I would be thinking of putting this dog on definitely liver tonic and probably if you can phytos flora and also um, uh, phytosynergy. Amazing thing. You might want to you might want to slowly do it so the dog all all of a sudden just doesn't go, oh my God, you've just given me all vegetables. And mm-hmm. I'm eating it mm-hmm. and I'm not going to eat because if they don't eat, that's worse than, than too much protein. Cause then, then the body will start to digest their own protein and that's harder for them to, to, um, to deal with than eating animal protein. Thanks, Julie. So Chris Doyle is asking, my vet said my little dog, Apollo, who is seven, eight, needs, I imagine years old, needs to have some teeth out. He's doing great with lots of energy and no problems or indications of pain. His last blood work was perfect for the first time too. I am worried about him having any complications or doing worse if he has dental surgery. What do you recommend? Taking him to a board certified dentist. So seven or eight isn't old for a little dog. Um, if his blood work is perfect, my biggest thing with, with, um, teeth is that I think that if you can do it and you have a a board certified dentist in your area, they should go to dentists. They really know what they're doing. They're in and out really fast. They're not under their general anesthetic as long as they are usually in a, in a clinic, Um, maybe sometimes they'll say, well, this one doesn't need to come out, but if you decide if they go in and the teeth are really in a bad state, if your dog was 17 or 18, or even maybe 13 or 14, or your dog had really bad blood work, like there was some major stuff going on with blood work, I would be saying, don't do it and deal with it homeopathically, go see a holistic vet give him supportive um, treatment for his heart. I would be doing all different things. But if he's a healthy seven to eight year old, I would be trying to get his teeth in in a good space and then be as proactive as I possibly, possibly could. Um, he just said he had a few teeth out when he was young. So, so something's up, right? Like maybe if he's really small, his mouth is super crowded. 
and that that's one of the reasons, but I don't know whether you're feeding this, this puppy bones, he's 12 pounds, right? So he's, he's little. So chicken necks, holding on to chicken necks and making sure that, you know, he's, when he's biting into the chicken neck, put a rubber glove on, hold on to the chicken neck, get him to chew it and pull it right, 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 right back to the far back as you can possibly get him to chew it and then do it on the other side. Uh, putting probiotics in his water, but just make sure that you don't put too much in his water that he won't eat it. But probiotics because of the bacteria that comes up in his saliva. Um, and also, you know, to, to, to help deal with that or brushing his teeth with, with a probiotic, like just taking our, our phytos flora, let's say, because of the fulvic and humic acid or taking um, even just love bugs and brushing his teeth with that to make sure that you're getting lots and lots of bacteria on, on, in his gums. Thanks, Julie. Um, Krista is asking, so there's a lot of uh, question, um, questions here. I have a 16 week old puppy that is getting ready for her last round of puppy shots. I ordered the rebalancer and plan to give it to her. I would like guidance as to timing and how long. The box says four pumps in food twice a day. She's only nine pounds. Should I give her less? Do I start it right after the vaccines? How long do I give it, it for? Is it okay for all vaccines? I have her distemper combo vaccine schedule and then her rabies separate two weeks later the box says to not not to give it for 10 days but she's getting two sets of shots two weeks apart should i just wait and do it all after the rabies one no no don't worry um do it right away whoops where'd it go went up okay so four pumps it's 16 week old puppy i don't know how big this puppy is but um you can do two pumps is nine pounds nine okay pounds, so yeah that's a small that's a small puppy so you can do um just two pumps is fine and i would do it you know twice a day right as soon as he's as soon as the vaccine's finished like the day of the vaccine, give two pumps twice a day for five days, and then you can stop. And then when you get the rabies vaccine, you can do the same the same way. Um, can I ask you? Does does is is the rabies, Krista? Is the rabies a um, a legality where you live? Like, is, do you legally have to? Um, yes, it is. That's really crappy. I just hate that vaccine so much. Um, uh, well, do I, you have to stop the other? Uh, absolutely not. In fact, you want to make sure that 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 you know liver tonic, um, anything to support the detoxification, uh, any kind of probiotic, like our pro one of our probiotics would be. Um, and and someone just said I wouldn't give the rabies. So I wouldn't either. I mean, this is, it's, it's really hard. Like I don't, that's why I'm asking about legalities. I would, I would wait three months before I would be giving the rabies shot 16 weeks. So, uh, eight, eight, 16, so four, four, it's four months, four months. Hold on. Is 16 weeks, four months. Yeah, that's, that is, um, 16 weeks, yes. is four months old, four months. right? Yes. Yeah. So she's having distemper at 17 weeks and rabies at 19 weeks. I don't think it's a legality to have rabies until they're six months. I don't know. I don't live in the U S can anybody else? Um, can anyone else tell me in this, in the U S like how, what is the legal, what's the legality for rabies? Isn't it, isn't it six months old? I don't even know if it's that I would, I would at least a year in most States. So if that's the case, uh, Krista, if that's the case, I'm waiting as long as they will let me. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, it depends on the state. Um, six months. 
Yeah, I would, I would wait as long as you possibly, possibly, possibly could for that. Uh, yes, well, a lot of vaccines have thimerosal in it. Almost all vaccines have thimerosal in it, not just the rabies vaccine, but the rabies vaccine is just, it, it's a particularly dangerous vaccine. Um, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Morgan says to wait for a year. That's what we also did, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I can't, I can't tell you to do, I can't legally tell you to do something that's illegal. But um, if you can, if you can wait till your dog is a year old before you give it its first rabies vaccine, that would be amazing. That, that would be, that would be ideal for sure. Um, I would really dig into that as much as you possibly can, Krista and see if you can, um, if you can, you know, it's not like if, if, if this is a little dog, it's not like it's going to be running around outside in the wilderness by itself. So, you know, just, I worry that my vet won't see her for other issues. If I do that, well, all they can do is say no, but you won't know unless you ask. So just, just come from a really, really heartfelt place that you're, um, you know, that, that considering it's a small breed dog, that it's never out on its own, would they be so kind to uh, wait until, would, would it be okay to wait until the dog was a year old before you got her first rabies vaccine? or at least nine months old till you got the first rabies vaccine. All they can do is say no, right? But I would, I would, you know, I know it's, it is scary. It is scary, but you can just ask, you know, just do your best and ask. Thanks, Julie. Beverly uh, is asking, in a previous ask, Julie, anything? You talked about vital synergy and cell communication slash cell signaling. I'm curious if that would mean phyto synergy enhances red, red, redox potential of cells. Redox signaling molecules, um, molecules. are now available, stabilized to, to take to replenish the cell's redox molecules. And molecules. To, <laughs> molecules. I'm sorry. <laughs> and to right. uh, everything else, we give our animals to support their health. I'm using them with my dog for his ACL injury in Kobo with Fido and other products and see how much it is improving his overall health. Well, that's a really interesting question. And I can't tell you a definitive yes or no answer, but I wouldn't doubt it. Because the size of the molecule, the size of the the size of each cell that your dog is ingesting is smaller than a red blood cell. So it has the ability to enter like a cell a cell to cell communication. So this is, you know, this is kind of philosophical, but it's my belief on with nature. It's my belief with um, anything to do with, our bodies and our health and our animals' bodies and their health is that we know a fraction of, of what, how our, how our cells and how nature communicates with each other from bacteria to, like I said, cell to cell. And I think that when a cell enters another cell and it enhances it, its ability to be healthier, it's going to affect the entire um, cell's uh, function. So I I wouldn't I would think that that would probably be happening. But like I said, I can't I can't speak to a hundred percent whether it does or it doesn't. But it would make complete sense to me that it's a, it's a it's a really good observation, and I think it would make that would make complete sense to me. Um, yes, the studies show it's opens genetic pathways for immune inflammatory digestive and other health areas. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I think I think that, that makes complete sense. Thanks, Julie. 
Um, Chrissy is saying that I have a ragdoll, 11 month old, who pants a bit when he is excited about playing or has run the hallway speedway. Vet says that's never normal in a cat and wants chest x-rays, but I would rather approach it this differently. I started him and his half brother on love bugs, jump for joints, and I have potency, but was going slow to start. Any thoughts? Um, well, So what does he do? He pants a bit, right? That That isn't normal, especially for, I don't think it's normal either for 11 month old cat. Is there a reason, uh, Chrissy, is there a reason why you're afraid to do x-rays? Is it just because of the radiation? Is she still here? I wonder, Chrissy, are you still here? I'll check. Okay. Does, does I don't I don't see no to hear because yet. yeah, so I mean maybe she'll watch this later or something, but mm -hmm. I would see for me that's you know, I'm not a big, you know, jump in and do a whole bunch of stuff, stuff, but it would be nice to know why the animal's doing that, because then you can get on top of it before something really is terribly wrong. And I know where she's going with the jump, with the potency for heart, for heart stuff and started him and his brother on love bugs jump for joints. And I have potency not sure why jump for joints. So I don't know, guys, I don't know whether she's in our, in our, um, our Facebook group, but if she's in our Facebook group, we could probably help her navigate this a little bit more. If you guys want to reach out to her tomorrow. Okay, great. Um, Rachel um, is asking, I have 11 year old Chihuahua mix and she has a fat, fatty tumor on her chest abdomen area. I tried giving her this mushroom powder that was supposed to shrink it and it barely did anything. She's on a grain free dog food, has taken rabies and the HPP vaccines pretty regularly. She does eat some table scraps. We do have the rebalancer, but haven't started it yet. Not sure what's needed for a fatty tumor, uh, though. Thanks. Fatty tumor on her chest, abdomen. I tried giving her this mushroom powder that was supposed to shrink it, and it barely did anything. She's on a grain-free dog food, has taken, has taking rabies and D, has or is taking has taking maybe had rabies and and pretty regularly yeah. um does eat some table scraps so first thing is i would for fatty tumor i would definitely be putting her on a home cooked diet or a raw food diet um fatty fatty tumors can be caused from all kinds of different things but Part of that is the, the process in which they digest their food and their susceptibility to cholesterol and, and, and different things like that. So I would be putting this puppy on, on a meat vegetable diet, even though like processed food, I, I see a lot more animals with fatty, fatty lipomas and things like that on processed food than I do on, on raw food or home cooked diets or a freeze dried raw food. So that would be something that I would be looking at right away to do right away. And then, yeah, you can definitely try the rebalancer and a hundred percent liver tonic and phytosynergy would be the, would be the ones that I would be um, uh, definitely looking at doing. So someone said shave the area and 
apply gauze soaked in castor oil and then wrap it. Um, from a topical perspective, I have heard that that I've never tried that, but I have heard that 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 can be helpful. But I'm such a, a an anal person about it's coming from within. So let's let's try and support the inside um, to uh, figure out why why is she got fatty fatty tumors to begin with. And everything that I've suggested is only going to help with her health and longevity. So it's not, you're not just focusing on, focusing on the fatty tumor, you're focusing on her, her lifelong health and, and longevity. Great. I guess like it, we're running really late. I don't know if you want to answer one more question or we can finish it here. Um, in canines, I have a breed that is not usually predisposed to a golden. I'm treating a seven-year-old intact male. Hyper. Are you reading the Kimberly? But what's one? what? What's hyperplastic? Like hyperplasia is a, a hyperplasia. What? I wonder if she's still here. KP Kimberly Perry. Let me see. Like, I don't, see, I don't see she here anymore. Okay, because I would need to know what kind of hyperplasia, like hyperplasia, prostate. Like, there's there's different things that could be hyperplastic. Yeah, hepatitis on frozen raw liver tonic, green juju, goat smoke, bams beet, sammy pea. And having a dental October 3rd, should I increase liver tonic more than three times daily? And what can I give her before and after, especially her pain naturally, border tear? Jump for joints. You can get it fast and it's amazing for any kind of dental stuff. It's got Arnica symphytum, which is for bone pain and, and periosteum pain, which is everything to do with teeth. Um, you can give it three to four times a day, right after you do the, do the surgery. This is for Beth. And, um, also the, yes, liver tonic can be given, uh, to th like, you can do more than three times a day. You could do, you could do it four times a day, but I think three times a day is fine. So try not to worry about that. And, um, a, a remedy called Nux Vomica. You can go and buy something called Nux Vomica 30C. I'm going to put it in the chat. I wonder if, if she's still here. So, um, so Nux Vomica 30C. So if you get Nux Vomica 30C and um, give give your dog Nux Vomica 30C along with the, the jump for joints, Nux Vomica will help to detox from the, um, the anesthetic. And you can do the, you can do jump for joints for two weeks and the Nux Vomica, you only have to do twice a day for maybe, um, I don't know, three days max. Amazing. So I guess I'm, like we're finishing it for today because uh, it's getting super late. Uh, and I know again that we have a lot of questions here. So please join our community on Facebook, the Derby's Collective. We will be glad to help you there. Um, I would like to thank everyone who joined us today. And of course, thank you, Julie, um, especially today after the the news that you got during the webinar. So thank you twice <laughs> for joining us and for your time and uh, this amazing discussion. I wish you all a great night and don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. You can sign up uh, on our website to get all the info about Adorbis or promos, new blog postings and future Ask Julie Anything sessions. Thank you so much again, everyone. Thank you so much, Julie. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Stay safe and have a good night, everyone. Bye.